The machine gun breaks down into six groups for general disassembly in the field. Number one, the buttstock group. Number two, the buffer group, consisting of the buffer and the buffer locking plate. Number three, the operating group, which includes the operating rod, the bolt, the operating rod drive spring, and the operating rod drive spring guide. Number four, the trigger housing group, consisting of the trigger housing, the spring lock, and the front trigger housing holding pin. Number five is the barrel group, which includes the barrel socket, the barrel, the gas cylinder, the bipod, the flash suppressor, and the front sight. Number six is the receiver group. With the barrel locking lever, the rear sight, the feed cover, and the feed plate. In general, many parts of the groups have been designed to be replaced as complete assemblies. This should make repairs of individual parts by using units almost unnecessary. We shall now see how the M60 functions. Each time a cartridge is fired, the parts of the machine gun move in a given sequence and perform definite jobs. This is known as the cycle of functioning. For instructional purposes, this cycle will be divided into eight steps. The first step is feeding, which is positioning the cartridge ready for chambering. The second step is chambering, the function of seating the round in the chamber. The third step is locking the bolt inside the barrel, thus holding the cartridge seated in the chamber so that gas pressure will be maintained in the barrel to propel the bullet. The fourth step is firing, ignition of the primer of the cartridge in the chamber. Step five is unlocking the bolt from the barrel. Step six is extraction of the empty cartridge case from the chamber. In step seven, the empty cartridge case is ejected from the gun. And step eight is cocking. These eight functions happen one after another and so rapidly as to be almost simultaneous. The cyclic rate of fire of the M60 machine gun is approximately 550 rounds per minute. This means that a bullet leaves the muzzle each tenth of a second while the gun is being fired. With the help of an oversized model, we'll be able to see exactly what goes on inside the gun. In this film, the functions of the gun will be demonstrated step by step. But remember, in actuality, these occur very fast and overlap each other. This is the belt holding pawl on the feed plate. Feeding begins when the first round is positioned over the pawl. The purpose of the pawl is to prevent the rounds from falling out of the feedway. Before you see the movements of the parts in feeding, note the location of the actuating cam roller on top of the bolt. As the bolt moves, the roller moves. As the bolt is moved rearward, the actuating cam roller moving in the feed cam forces the feed cam to move to the left and the feed cam lever and belt feed pawls to move to the right. As the feed cam lever and the feed pawls move to the right, they pull the first round with them and position it in the feed plate groove. The first round is now in front of the bolt and directly behind the chambering ramp. The bolt is carried forward by the operating rod. The actuating cam roller now moves the feed cam to the right. This moves the belt feed pawls to the left. Let's repeat the action. The feed pawls slide over the second round in the belt 
and then to the left of the round. The feet paws will stay here until the bolt moves to the rear. This completes the first step, feeding. Chambering begins with a round in the feed plate groove and the bolt and operating rod to the rear. When the round is in the feed plate groove, the front cartridge guide and the rear cartridge guide place downward pressure on the round to hold it in position. These guides are under spring tension. The rear end of the front cartridge guide will block the forward movement of the belt link. To chamber around, the trigger must be pulled. First though, let's see how the trigger and sear operate. When the safety is placed in the safe position and the trigger pulled, it will prevent the rear of the sear from pivoting downward. With the safety in the fire position, the rear of the sear pivots downward when the trigger is pulled, releasing the operating rod and allowing the operating rod drive spring to expand. When the trigger housing group is properly attached to the gun and the trigger pulled, the sear disengages from the sear notch. The operating rod, driven by its expanding spring, starts forward. The bolt travels forward also, and we shall now see how the cartridge is stripped from the belt. In the M60, the round is stripped from the belt link in a single forward action by the upper locking lug striking the rim of the cartridge, moving it forward. The link is firmly held by the front and rear cartridge guides and cannot move forward with the cartridge. The nose of the round is guided down into the chamber by the chambering ramp. Let us repeat the action. The ramps guide the round downward toward the chamber. The bolt locking lugs now contact the curved surfaces of the barrel socket. The bolt starts to rotate clockwise. The extractor engages the rim of the cartridge. Chambering is completed. Locking began with chambering. As the parts move forward, the operating rod yoke engaged in the bolt camming slot aids in rotating the bolt in a clockwise direction. The locking lugs engage the locking recesses of the barrel socket. Locking is completed. The next step is firing. The forward movement of the operating rod carries the firing pin forward. The firing pin strikes the primer of the cartridge and ignites the round. Firing has been accomplished. 